So if you're not familiar with Jiffy DOS, it's basically a complete rewrite of the Commodore ROM kernels to speed up access on the serial bus. Uh, more importantly, to speed up access on the uh, 1541 disk drive, which is notoriously slow. The Jiffy DOS is actually uh, several pieces. Uh, one goes inside the Commodore 64 or uh, Commodore 128 or uh, I think pretty much every Commodore computer that replaces the kernel uh, ROM chip. There's another part that goes inside the disk drive. Uh, the Commodore disk drives are considered intelligent peripherals. They have their own CPU, their own I.O. chips, uh, RAM and ROM. So uh, the DOS actually runs in the disk drive rather than on the Commodore 64 itself. So my Commodore 64, which is here, already had Jiffy DOS installed in it, but I didn't have Jiffy DOS on the 1541. So I bought a licensed version from Jim Brain. He's a licensed dealer. He sells Jiffy DOS and any configuration you want uh, for the S Commodore 64, the Commodore 128, and for all the Commodore disk drives, 1541, 1581, uh, 1571, as well as some third-party disk drives. But this is, this is the part that goes inside the 1541. Now, when you buy Jiffy DOS from Jim, you can buy it either as a ROM image where you need to uh, program it onto your own EEPROM, or you can buy this. This is uh, a flash EEPROM. Uh, it's already programmed with the version of Jiffy DOS that I specified and all ready to plug in and go. Uh, it's got a switch attached to it. So you can enable or disable Jiffy DOS. The Commodore 64 also has a switch to do the same thing. And uh, you pop out the old ROM chip and pop in this and you're off and running. Depending on the hardware you're installing this in, it could be either a snap, a five second job to install if you're lucky and your ROM chips are socketed. If your ROM chips are not socketed, then you're going to have to figure out a way to uh, remove the ROM chips, desolder them, or uh, hopefully desolder them so you can do it in a non-destructive way or just snip them out. So, what I've got, like I said, is my Commodore 64 with Jiffy DOS. Over here is my 1541, which is not Jiffy DOS. This is actually a 1541C, uh, which is important when you're considering Jiffy DOS, even though it is a 1541 disk drive. There are several variants of the 1541. This is a 1541C. One way you can tell is by the disk headlock here. Uh, inside, there's other ways to tell. <clears throat> there was a 1541 with the long board, 1541 with the short board. 1541C and the 1541-2 and uh, they're different so you need to consider that if you ever go down the Jiffy DOS route. So I'm going to install Jiffy DOS in this Commodore 1541 disk drive. Um, I've kind of cheated because I've already got the screws out because I installed a fan on it earlier. I left the screws out because I knew I was going to be installing Jiffy DOS so the first thing to do other than removing the screws is to make sure you remove the cables so you don't accidentally power it on and remove the cover to get inside and this is the inside of the 1541 and as I said uh, maybe it's considered simple by today's technology but in the 80's these were intelligent peripherals each disk drive, a 1541, 71, 81, etc., has its own CPU, has its own memory, RAM, and has a bunch of I.O. chips. So, <clears throat> basically, inside here, this is the ROM chip that I need to replace. 
This is where the Commodore DOS is. There are uh, different size ROM chips based on the disk drives you're using. A 1541C and 1541-2 use 16K ROMs. The older versions use 8K ROMs. So if you bought the 1541C version in a flash file, in a, in a ROM image, you would get a 16K file that you have to burn onto a 16K ROM, uh, which I think is a 27256. Um, I don't have any 27256s. I do have an EEPROM programmer. I probably could have burned it onto a 32K, uh, which I think is a 27512. Uh, burn it there twice, but like it, since this is plug and play Real easy. I'm just gonna do this. I don't need to solder anything even though I'm normally the hands-on kind of guy I don't need to solder anything Just pop it in and go There's another version. There's another dealer on eBay who's a, a licensed dealer of Jiffy DOS, but I bought this from Jim Brain. I've bought other things from him before, so I trust him. And he ships relatively fast, so I'm pretty happy. But pull the ROM chip out <clears throat> using whatever method you're familiar and comfortable with. It's a little awkward because this chip and this uh, capacitor kind of get in the way. And if I had a real chip puller rather than this flathead screwdriver probably be a little easier so just be careful that you don't break anything don't bend any pins or anything like that and once it's out you basically you want to set it aside maybe put a label on it and stick it on some foam so you know what it is but if you were to look up the part numbers it would tell you what the uh, version of DOS is installed on here so now that's in removed I can take my Jiffy DOS replacement and find pin 1 which is probably here because there's a notch so we put this back in the empty socket. Make sure your pins are aligned. Snap it in. Now, as I said, there's a switch so you can enable or disable Jiffy DOS. Later on, I will take the uh, I'll take the case and I'll drill a hole, mount the switch in there. But for now, I'm just gonna let it flop around. So now that the ROM chip is installed, I'll put the cover back on. And I'll take my original ROM chip and put it on the anti-stat foam. And that's it. We'll plug in the power and do the smoke test. If I can find my power cord and if I can find the I'll turn it on and the power light should go on the disk drive light should go on briefly and then turn off and that looks good no smoke the drive looks like it reset properly so I'm going to turn it off and come over the Commodore 64 over here and actually the monitor bring the monitor a little closer and turn off the light as I mentioned this Commodore 64 has Jiffy DOS in it already Turn the Commodore on, turn the monitor on, set the camera a little better, 
and you can see Jiffy DOS. If I was in Commodore DOS or regular Commodore, you would see that. Flip the switch and enable Jiffy DOS on the Commodore 64 only. Now I need to turn on my 1541. And the way to tell, I don't know what position the switch is in. And you can see the status message when you first turn it on. Read the status channel. Oh, I forgot to plug in the serial cable. I have to plug in the serial cable. Turn on. <clears throat> and read the status channel. It says it's in CBM DOS mode. So if I turn it off and throw the switch to the other position, turn on the drive. Now it's a Jiffy DOS, so that part is working. So I have Jiffy DOS on my Commodore 64, I have Jiffy DOS on my 1541, and I can use my DOS wedge commands. What I'm going to do is actually I'm going to put it back into standard Commodore DOS mode, like that and I'm gonna put the Commodore 64 back in standard ROM and I'm gonna run a program called CBM Mark uh, if you do a Google search on it you can find it and you can download it and it's a benchmark program and it runs a number of tests on your disk drives creating files, reading files, deleting files and it's a relatively good indication of how slow or fast your drive is so what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to run CBM Mark first with basic Commodore uh, ROM and then I'm going to run it again with Jiffy DOS and hopefully you'll see the numbers. So first things, let's look at the floppy. And it's in capitals, but uh, load the 64 version it takes a long time to load uh, which is kind of ironic but um, I'm gonna pause the video for now and when the program's running I'll start it up again okay CBM mark is loaded and it scanned the serial bus and it only found one drive on drive 8 which is what I expect and it reads the version so you know what, if you're running in Commodore mode or Jiffy DOS mode, this is Commodore mode. And you press enter to go. It says prepare selected drives and hit return. I don't know what that means, just make sure there's a floppy in the disk drive. It also knows whether you're a PAL or a NTSC version of the Commodore 64. So press enter and it starts running a bunch of tests. They take a long time to run. Uh, probably about 10 minutes. I'm going to pause the video when it comes back to the results screen. It'll show you how long it ran. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Alright, so CBM Mark is done running its test and it's reporting the results. And these are the results of all the tests. Uh, these are the various tests. Program write, program read, program write, two different sizes. Uh, sequential reads and writes of various different sizes and relative reads and writes of various different sizes and it tells you how long it took. I'm assuming these are seconds, 15 seconds, 10 seconds, 24. So I wrote all these numbers down and uh, of course it's also reporting the DOS version. So I wrote all these numbers down and I'm gonna rerun CBM Mark in Jiffy DOS mode and if these these numbers should all go down uh, according to Jiffy DOS uh, documentation they should go down uh, pretty significantly so what I am going to do is now the Commodore 64 is in Jiffy DOS and I put the switch for the 1541 Make sure that's in Jiffy DOS, and now it's a lot easier to run stuff. So I will just simply do that, and 
hopefully it'll load faster than the non Jiffy DOS version so I'm not actually going to pause the video oh look at that so again uh, CBM Mark scanned the dr drive chain only found one drive and uh, reported Jiffy DOS which I would expect and press enter same thing press enter and it's going to run and I'm going to pause again and when it comes back it comes back to the results screen and we'll see what the numbers look like so CBM Mark is done running and it's reported uh, what I would say is a pretty drastic increase in the various times uh, I have it written down here the original times you really can't see but uh, go down the line I program right originally took 15 seconds now we're down to just under 8 program read originally took 10 seconds now we're done down to just under 2 seconds that, that's a lot uh, an 8k read was originally 24 and now it's 11 and uh, an 8k read is originally 21 now it's down to 3 seconds and look at the sequential reads and writes uh, these this was 308 264 this was 32 26 5 3 204 and 11 I guess the sequential are the relative files uh, I don't understand but uh, barely any increase on that but relative files are kind of sort of esoteric anyway so uh, you get a pretty good increase in speed by using Jiffy DOS. So, anyways, uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.